Hello all, Shoestring here. Today what I'm going to talk about is how to connect two deep cycle batteries in parallel. Now these are wet lead acid batteries, the ones that are normally used in most solar power systems. So that's why I thought I'd do a video of these in parallel. Why do you want to do parallel? Well, parallel is how you get a battery bank to increase your capability. Without being able to put batteries into parallel, you're only going to be able to use one battery at a time, and that will shorten your energy storage. So let's talk about it. Parallel is when you take two batteries and you connect them together. You keep the voltage the same. It will still be 12 volts. These are both 12-volt batteries, and they'll stay 12 volts but you will increase how much storage capacity you have. Okay, so a couple things to remember. These are wet lead acid, therefore they require maintenance. You have to keep them clean and you have to check and make sure they have water. You want to use distilled water. You just pop it open, take a quick look. Got to be careful though, this is last acid in here. You want to look and make sure that the water is in there, which this one is. And I've checked them all before, so I know there is water. But if you're not sure, you want to check. Make sure, like I said, it's distilled water. And quick check over here. And it, of course, has water as well. All right, so water. Remember, distilled water. Don't put in regular water. You want distilled water. Okay, next, we want to make sure they are fully charged. Now, here's the secret of these. You don't have to be the same voltage. It simply has to be fully charged. So, we'll take our fancy multimeter, and we'll check. That's negative to negative. Yeah, let's do the right one, shoestring. Negative to negative, positive to positive. And it's 13.10 or so. Let's do the next one. Same thing. Negative and the positive. And it's 13, we'll say 20. Which is good enough. They don't have to be perfect. What they have to be is both fully charged, which I did right before we set this up. Another thing we want to talk about is storage capacity. If you look at this battery right here, you'll see it has what's called reserve capacity. Reserve capacity is what you're going to use when you're trying to figure out the amp hours. Batteries like this do not come in amp hours like AGM or lithium does. So, how do we figure out our amp hours since that's what we want? There is a complicated formula for doing it, but I'm going to tell you shoestrings trick. Shoestring's trick is to take your reserve capacity and cut it in half. So, this reserve capacity says 210. I'll cut that in half and get 105. Normally, just to make sure um, calculations are right, I'll lock, knock the last number off. So, I will consider this a 100 amp hour battery. Over here, you can see, this is the same. 210, cut it in half, 105, and then you take off the 5 and you now have 100. These are both, I would consider both these 100 amp hour batteries. You also want to get them as close to the same as you possibly can. So this is a diehard, this is an autocraft, but if you look at the numbers, they are pretty much the same. They're both 210, which is the most important thing, reserve capacity. The other numbers aren't so important unless you plan on having cranking capability, unless you're going to start a motor which in this case we're not going to be discussing. Right now, what we're looking at is the 210, and you want to get the model as close as possible. The reason is you want to discharge and recharge at the same rate. And if they're the same, they will do that. Now, has shoestring put batteries together in parallel that are not the same? Yes, he has, and he will. But at the moment, I'm showing you and telling you the most ideal way to do it. Okay, so now let's talk about what we're going to do to put these in parallel. They're fully charged. They have water. They're all good to go. So what we're going to do first is wire them together. And we're going to wire them together since this is parallel 
positive, two positive, and negative, two negative. So we take the positive, put it on. Um, if you want to on your own, you can use a red cable for this. It really doesn't matter. As long as you know what you're doing, that you're keeping track of what's positive and what's negative, of course. Uh, plenty of my videos I have done with red cables for positive. Okay, that's the positive. Uh, in case you're not sure, it will show you right here a little plus sign. Hopefully you can see that. And up here it has a plus sign. Also on the negative, we'll have a negative right there and one right there. Okay, so now we're going to connect the negative. And this negative. Now I'm only doing these finger tight. You'll want to take a wrench, pliers, whatever you have. And make sure you get it nice and tight. You also want these cables to be as short as possible. You want the batteries to be as close as possible, depending on what your situation is. I did these just a little long, like I do sometimes when I'm doing videos, because I want to show you clearly what we're doing. So, let's take our multimeter once again and check it. And it is 1315. So it, this is still a 12 volt system. But what we've done is we increased the capability. So you can now have, by doing it this way, your own battery bank. So instead of 100 amp hours, you now have 200 amp hours. If you got another battery just like this and connected another one, you now have three amp hours, 300 amp hours. And you can continue to do that to build up a system that will meet your energy needs. So, like I said, this is how you do a battery bank. Oh, and let's discuss a new battery in a battery bank. Let's say one of these batteries goes out and you need to replace it because it's bad. You want to take that new battery, make sure it matches as closely as possible, and then you simply Charge it all the way up first. All, all batteries going in a battery bank should be charged all the way up first. Then you simply dis disconnect these, put in the new battery, and wire it in. And you now have a replacement for your battery system. Okay, so if you have any questions or comments, please put them down in the description. And that is how you take a battery and you turn it into a parallel system to increase your storage capability. Okay, so if you like these kinds of videos, please subscribe and like, and put something down in the comments. I get a lot of suggestions on videos to make, things people want to know by the comments below. Shoestring out.